So in session one, I introduced the Ottoman Empire, and we talked about how the Ottoman Empire was now starting to shrink. Uh, the closer we get to World War I in 1914, it was starting to shrink due to various victim countries revolting against it and claiming independence. And I gave you the example of when there is a substitute or when the teacher is not present in class. Think about the Ottoman Empire, the bully country, as the teacher. The teacher has full control of all of the students, so the students are kind of like the victim countries, and the teacher pretty much makes the students do uh, whatever he or she desires, and if the students don't, then there's consequences. When the teacher is absent or the teacher has to be pulled from class, Usually the students gain a little bit more independence, might get a little bit rowdier, might not do the work, uh, and so it kind of becomes uncertain in the classroom as to whether or not uh, the students are doing what they should be doing. And that's pretty much what was happening in Europe. Uh, as the Ottoman Empire started getting smaller and smaller and retreating and not really having too much of a presence in Europe, uh, the status of the Balkan Peninsula became very uncertain because lots of the victim countries are now pretty much doing whatever they wanted. Now, Austria-Hungary, another bully country, is watching all of this go down. The Austrian-Hungarian Empire is seeing its fellow bully friend lose power and more power and more power. And the Austria-Hungarian Empire is worried. They are scared that their victim countries are going to want to do the same thing that the Vinta countries did to the Ottoman Empire. So Miss Benavides is absent, her students are out of control, doing whatever they want in her classroom, room 121, and next door Mr. Hamilton is seeing what's going on and he's hearing what's going on and he's worried that his own students are going to want to also not do anything today, are going to also want to act up. And so just like Mr. Hamilton might worry about his students getting out of hand because Ms. Benavides's are out of hand with the substitute, the Austro-Hungarian Empire is extremely worried that its victim countries are going to want to get out of hand and revolt and get independence as well. Now the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the AHE, make sure we're jotting this down, the AHE decided to be proactive. And when you are proactive, this means that you're taking actions to resolve a problem before the problem even becomes a problem. And so the Austro-Hungarian Empire decided to be proactive. Since it was worried that some of its victim countries, that some of the people in the BP would want to revolt against it, just like what had happened to the Ottoman Empire, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire decided to go and kind of like flex its muscle and show some of its power. And so what it did to show some of its power was they decided to go and pretty much annex, which means take over, a new piece of territory. Now in the Balkan Peninsula, most of the people that lived here in the Balkan Peninsula, most of these people were from victim countries. And most of these people were from victim countries that were now controlled either by Austria-Hungary or by the Ottoman Empire. And something that a lot of these victim countries had in common was that they considered themselves to be Slavs. Now, we gave this example last class during the Unit 5.5 notes. When you hear the word Slavs, think of Hispanics. Hispanics are a group of people who speak a common language, which is Spanish, and most Hispanics practice a common religion, which is Catholicism. But Hispanics come from many different countries. They can come from Mexico, Colombia, Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina, and the list goes on and on. But all of these people consider themselves to be Hispanics. When we talk about Slavs, Slavs are a group of people who speak a common language, which is a Slavic language, and they have similar cultures and they practice very similar religious beliefs, but Slavs come from many different European countries, specifically many European countries here in the Balkan Peninsula. And so what Austria-Hungary decides to do, Austria-Hungary decides to intimidate the victim countries it controls. It decides to make an example. 
And so in order to enforce its imperialism over the Balkan Peninsula territory, the Austro-Hungarian Empire annexed, meaning took, a new territory in the BP known as Bosnia-Herzegovina. So here is Bosnia-Herzegovina. Bosnia-Herzegovina was not a victim country before. It was independent. Austria-Hungary wants to kind of show what the consequences are. Uh, if you mess with Austria-Hungary, if you try to rebel against Austria-Hungary, the consequences, we take you over, we punish you with militarism. And so Austria-Hungary goes in and takes Bosnia-Herzegovina in order to show all of the other victim countries, hey, we mean business. Don't try to rebel, because if you try to rebel, there's going to be consequences. Look, Bosnia-Herzegovina wasn't doing anything, but we're going to show you guys just how strong we Austria-Hungary are. And so now the Austro-Hungarian Empire has taken Bosnia-Herzegovina and it's basically expanding its empire. Here we can see Bosnia-Herzegovina, the territory that the Austro-Hungarian Empire has just annexed, meaning took. Now, a lot of people were upset that the Austro-Hungarian Empire annexed Bosnia-Herzegovina. And one country in particular that was very upset about this annexation, this taking of Bosnia-Herzegovina, was the tiny country of Serbia. And we can see Serbia here. Serbia is in between the Austrian-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire, which has shrunken. Make sure that you filled in the title for this slide. And so because Serbia is upset over this annexation, we're going to see that the Austrian-Hungarian Empire and Serbia are going to come into conflict. Now, the Austrian-Hungarian annexation angered the newly independent Serbia. Serbia had been a victim country, but it had been a victim country controlled by the Ottoman Empire. And Serbia got really upset to see one of its neighbors, Bosnia-Herzegovina, now become a victim country. Serbia like knew what it was like to be a victim country and didn't want Bosnia-Herzegovina to experience that. On top of that, Bosnia-Herzegovina had a very large Slavic population and most of the people in Serbia were Slavs. And so not only does Serbia know what it feels like to be a victim country, but Serbia also cares about Bosnia-Herzegovina because the two countries are mostly made up of Slavic people. And Slavic people tend to kind of have each other's back, just like Hispanics tend to have each other's back. And so Serbia, right here, Serbia is not happy that Bosnia-Herzegovina, this small little territory right here, has just been taken over by Austria-Hungary. Now, not only is Serbia upset about this annexation, but Russia is also upset. And so we're going to see Russia step in as a Serbian ally. Again, this tension between Serbia and Austria-Hungary is happening here in the Balkan Peninsula. The Ottomans are playing a small role because their empire is deteriorating, meaning shrinking. But then Russia up here on the eastern side, Russia is now deciding to come in and join this issue in the Balkan Peninsula over the annexation, the taking of land. Now, Russia and the Austrian-Hungarian Empire had a long history of rivalry. And this rivalry extends back to way before World War I. If we remember during the Unit 5.5 lecture notes, we learned that the Russians had gone to war with the Japanese. The Russians had lost this Russo-Japanese war. And because the Russians lost this war, pretty much the Russians had to stop imperializing in the Far East. And they now had to focus imperializing somewhere else. And the Russians decided to focus on Europe specifically the Balkan Peninsula. Well, if we take a look at this bullet point, this rivalry that Austria-Hungary has with Russia is going to increase, especially since after the Russo-Japanese War, Russia had decided to imperialize the BP instead of, I just said it, the Far East. Serbia reaches out to Russia for help with the BP issue, and Russia supports them. Russia says, hey, Serbia, I'm, I'm going to totally support you. I totally agree with you that it's unfair that Austria-Hungary just took Bosnia-Herzegovina. We don't like that, too. And we're going to support you because we are Slavs. 
you Serbia, you guys are Slavic, Bosnia Herzegovina, a lot of people there are Slavic, we Russia, we are Slavic, and us Slavs have to stick together. So of course, we Russia will support you Serbia. The second reason why Russia supports Serbia is because Russia just already already really hated Austria-Hungary. Remember, Austria-Hungary is trying to take land in the Balkans. Russia is now also trying to take land in the Balkans since it cannot take land in the Far East. And when two big powerful countries are trying to take land in the same area, those two countries are going to automatically hate each other. Finally, the last reason why Russia decides to jump in and take Serbia's side is because if it takes Serbia's side and if it can be successful in supporting Serbia, well, the winners of conflict and the winners of war always get land, and land is power. And so Russia's going to come into this Balkan Peninsula conflict with the idea of, if I can help Serbia win, I'll be able to get some land in return for having helped them. Make sure that you've got these three key points written down. These three key points are really important in helping you understand why Russia is going to get involved in the Balkan Peninsula and why they're going to join Serbia, join Serbia against Austria-Hungary. Now, with this tension brewing in the Balkan Peninsula, Serbia is mad at Austria-Hungary, Russia is mad at Austria-Hungary, Austria-Hungary is mad at Russia and Serbia. With all of this tension brewing here in the Balkan Peninsula, it's only a matter of time before World War I erupts. Now, keep in mind that even before Austria-Hungary, Russia, and Serbia were having problems, even before those three countries started having beef, the four main background causes had already been creating a lot of tension in Europe, okay? So the main background causes, militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism, have led to a tremendous amount of hatred, military growth, secret pacts, and competition in pre-World War I Europe, meaning before World War I even starts. And some examples of that we learned last lesson during the Unit 5.5 notes. France and Great Britain are very uh, wary, very suspicious of Germany because Germany is practicing lots of militarism and alliances and imperialism. And so France and Great Britain feel threatened and they also decide to practice militarism and alliances. We learned this lecture, Unit 5.6, that Austria-Hungary and Russia, they are also practicing some of these main background causes. They're practicing imperialism, and they both feel that they're entitled to conquer more land because they have nationalism, they have pride in their countries. And so now it's, it's really obvious to everyone in Europe, specifically in the whole world, it's really obvious that it's only a matter of time before a war starts. With all of this tension in the Balkan Peninsula and with all of this tension in Europe, it's literally a ticking time bomb. We can see this picture here does a nice job of showing this is basically the Balkan Peninsula. This is kind of all the tension that's brewing in this nasty hot pot. These are all the big leaders of the great powers countries kind of sitting around watching this boiling pot. And they know that this pot, that Europe, is going to explode very soon. Now, Serbia and Austria-Hungary in the Balkan Peninsula, these are going to be the two main countries that are going to basically start this war. Uh, and so the conflict between Serbia and Austria-Hungary, we'll learn about that next class, the conflict between these two countries is going to be the trigger event, the last straw that basically causes all of Europe to break into a war. And even though this war is only between these two countries, Austria, Hungary, and Serbia, we're going to see all of Europe gets involved and eventually most of the world gets involved. If time allows, we're gonna go ahead and watch this video clip. And if we watch the video clip, you'll be jotting down five key takeaways in your notes about any facts or anything that you learn about tension in the Balkan Peninsula. If time does not allow, then we will be skipping this video to jump straight into the exit ticket. Remember that the exit ticket is your IDs, 
And remember that these IDs are due at the end of class. If you finish IDs early, start.